Like so many of us, 2020 literally pulled the rug out from under my feet and when all was said and done, my life was a hot mess. And now here I am at 40 something, healing from depression and anxiety, doing my best to live my best hot mess life, all while making some magic and miracles along the way, using the same sacred feminine principles that I've been preaching for so long. And now I get to share all of that with you. My name is Maria, aka The Fem Coach, and you're listening to The Femcast Podcast, the podcast for wild, sassy, and spiritual women who are ready to tap into their sacred feminine superpowers to live their best hot mess life. This podcast is listener discretion advised for mature content and coarse language. Hey, you guys, and what is up? Welcome back to the Femcast. I'm so excited that you're here. And honestly, I just want to have some fun today with this episode. Um, It's been a super crazy week. Lots has been going on. I am absolutely hormonal at the moment, and I'm not even going to try to deny it. Um, As a matter of fact, I think I've decided to, that I'm going to 100% shamelessly capitalize on it. And, and I do mean that in the, <laughs> in the most possible way in that today we're going to be calling this episode, the period mix. <laughs> um, these are the top 10 do's and don'ts for what can be the closest we can possibly get to feel good periods, um, or at least feel better periods. Um, I honestly swear by these rules that I'm about to share with you and, and y'all know me. I hate rules, but these are my like, I don't know, my period commandments of do's and don'ts um, for, you know, when those days are upon us. Um, And, you know, I I, I say this loosely, you know, I always say, you know, do what feels right for you in the moment and what feels most aligned. Um, So do, do I... Are, are these non-negotiable? Probably not. But for the most part, I mean, I have found they've made faring through my cycle a much more easier and positive experience. So, you know, I may not do them all 100%, but I, I mean, that is that is my goal. I try to do them as best as I can, um, giving myself some grace as well. So um, they've seriously been life-changing. So that's why I kind of wanted to share them well, with you all today. And And I mean, you know, let's just, let's just be honest. Um, for most women, at least the women I know, um, that last week of your cycle is not the sexiest week of the month for anybody. Um, you're tired, you're hot, you're cold, you're bloated, you're irritable, you're emotional, you're uncomfortable, your skin is a hot mess. It is as though every part of your body is angry at you and rebelling. Um, and even my hair gets angry. I don't know about you guys, but my hair gets angry when I'm on my period. Like I can't style it properly. I tell it to go one way. It goes another way. It's frustrating. I don't even bother anymore. <laughs> I just don't even try. Um, and yeah, it, it can literally feel like you are completely out of whack for a couple of days. Now for some women, this is two days. For some women, this is 10 days. So it really all depends on who you are and you know where you are in your cycle and, and, and what your cycle rhythms are. Um, there's some great apps out there actually for tracking your cycle and where you are in your cycle and what phase you're in and trying to understand how to make the most out of each phase. So I totally look into those. Um, they really do help. Um, so yeah, so give that a go and, and, and see what's up. I think, um, the one that I use, I'm actually going to look at it right now is, um, and you'll probably hear me tapping on my phone. So bear with me as I do this. I think it's called woman log. Yeah, it's called woman log. Um, it just helps me track my period and, and, um, figure out which phase of my cycle I'm in. So, and that usually when you can kind of figure out which phase that you're in, you can kind of figure out how to, you know, navigate. But I mean, all that aside, here's what I really noticed about women. Although, you know, we typically tend to talk to each other about our periods very openly and candidly about how we feel, how many days it lasts, um, you know, how we, how we feel in different phases of it and blah, blah, blah. We can get, we can get very um, into the details with each other, especially if we're close, right? We don't mind sharing these things. Um, however, that's when we're not on it. When we are on it, 
I find that a lot of us are trying desperately to hide that we are. Um, and maybe that's not so much with each, like with our close circle of friends, but with everyone else, I think. Actually, even with your close circle of friends, sometimes I find that there's this dynamic where you're trying to hide that you're on your period. Or maybe you tell them after, maybe kind of whisper it on, you know, under your breath, right? Um, we're trying to pretend that we're not feeling all this funkiness that we're feeling and that, you know, we can go about our day as normal and show up as our usual self. And we're trying desperately to do that and say, it's like we're trying to put it out in the world out there. I'm not being affected by this. I got this. I'm handling it. Look, you can't tell what's going on behind the scenes here. You're kind of like the drunk guy at the party who's trying really hard to sound like he's sober and it's just not working because y'all know he's not sober. Um, it's the same thing. Like we're trying so hard to pretend that we're not on our period and we're not in all this suffering. <laughs> um, and I just wonder often so many times, like, why do we do that? Why do we try so hard to make it seem like we're not in excruciating pain? Why do we try so hard to pretend that we're not, I don't know, feeling insecure and depressed because we suddenly feel like we're two sizes too big for all the clothes in our closet out of the blue? Um, why do we, um, you know, just why do we try so hard to pretend like to be pretend smiling throughout the day when really we're kind of mentally obsessing over what our partner didn't say on the phone yesterday or what our boss did say in the meeting this morning, right? And wondering, going through that train wreck of thoughts in our head, like, oh my God, what did she mean? Was that a dig at me? Was that, am I supposed to take, you know, we do this. And, um, and these are all true examples, by the way, I've, I've been there, done all these things at one point or another. But seriously, is it because we're afraid of being judged that we're on our period? Or if we're going to get shamed for it? Is, is it something bad that we've done? Is it bad to be a woman? Maybe. Maybe it's the one thing that separates us from the male population that we just can't deny that we're not equal at. And maybe some of us who have more feminist tendencies have a really hard time with um, being open and honest about our cycle. Maybe that's possible. Um, do we feel like it makes us look weak, vulnerable, susceptible, um, feeling like if we, if we put it out there, or if we show it or some, in some way, shape or form, it's like, we're, we can't quote unquote handle it. Um, I don't know, maybe it's all of the above, you know, I feel like, um, you know, for many of us, you know, we grew up with this, this, I don't want to say it was different, but we grew up sort of, um, feeling right. Like, you know, being menstrual, and again, I'm using air quotes here, being menstrual was just another stigma or dig at being a woman. And I think that people, you know, maybe when we were growing up, we heard that term, you know, kind of thrown around around us. And we didn't really, like, we kind of interpreted it as being a really bad thing. Um, and, you know, it was probably meant in, in not the most um, liberating <laughs> sense of the word and context. Um, and we've kind of picked up on that, right? So we've all heard things like, oh, she can't come to work today. She's menstrual, right? Said sarcastically. Um, or you can't trust a woman to do that job, especially when she's menstrual, right? How many times have you heard of someone saying you can't have a woman president or a leader um, because she'll probably push, you know, she'll probably throw the switch when she's menstruating, right? How, like, how bogus is that? Um, or this is my personal favorite. What's wrong with you? Are you menstrual or something? Like when someone says that to you, those are fighting words. <laughs> um, right. Like, it's like, yeah, I, I can't even, you know, I think we've all heard this at one point or another. And it's almost as though, you know, have you ever been in that situation where you're kind of, you're so afraid to let on that you're on your period because suddenly, like if you're in an argument, right? Like to say, for example, if you're in an argument, you're having disagreement with somebody and you're so afraid to let on that you are actually on your period at that time because it's like suddenly if they were to find out that you were on your period, that would mean that you'd suddenly lose all credibility in the argument, right? <laughs> None of what you just said mattered or was valid in any way. It's like you would automatically be assumed that whatever... Um, whatever the problem was or whatever it was that you were feeling or experiencing in that moment that you were upset about immediately becomes 100% and completely invalidated because you're just being menstrual, right? Um, so you try to hide it and pretend like it's not. But here's the thing. And, and I will say this, and I never, I never, I am never one for advocating, you know, 
invalidating our own feelings and what we're going through. But I do think that when we talk about validating who we are, what we're feeling and experiencing, what we're going through, I think we also need to validate that this is a very emotional time for us, right? And how we learn to navigate that is going to be um, a really important part of how we function as humans and how we relate to one another. And I don't think a lot of us are ever really taught how to manage. We're told that we're emotional. We're told that we're out of balance. We're told that we are experiencing mood swings and irritability and that we're uncomfortable. We're told all these things, but we're not actually told how to handle it other than to, it's kind of assumed that we're supposed to try and hide it and pretend it's not happening and it's business as usual as best we can, right? But that doesn't work. It really doesn't. It's really... You're really resisting yourself and what you're going through and what you're experiencing and and denying it, right, instead of working with it. And that's what I kind of hope to talk about here today. Um, and seriously, like I can remember, um, and this is probably an extreme... This is probably a more extreme perspective, not an extreme experience, but a very extreme perspective, right? Um, I can remember being... Uh, I think it was around 11 years old when I, when I first got my period and I can remember going to church with my family and I remember one of the women telling me, um, oh, you know, you shouldn't take Holy Communion because we, in, in our, in our tradition, we do Holy Communion usually every Sunday. Um, and I remember one of the women telling me, um, oh, you shouldn't take Holy Communion when you're, when you're on your period. Like she's talking to me like all cutesy, like, cause I'm a little girl. Like, oh, you shouldn't take Holy Communion when you're on your period. And I'm like, oh, how come? She goes, oh, cause you know, um, uh, basically how she said it, um, I'm trying to translate here. Basically how she said it is because it means that I'm unclean. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> like what the fuck? Right. Um, so I remember thinking to myself, because to me, this was something that I didn't ask for. This is something that, you know, I was kind of given, right? You know, and I believed in God and I believe we're created by God. And I believe that, um, you know, everything that physically is handed down to us is handed down to us by God. So I remember thinking to myself, like, why would God make me unclean? Why would he choose to do this to me? Is Did I do something wrong? Am I bad? Like, why would he... Why would he deny me like this, right? And I remember having this converse, like this dialogue in my head. And I don't think this woman even realized how I translated what she was telling me and made it, in, it, it mean into something, you know, made it mean something totally different. And again, this is where as children, sometimes we take day, you know, regular day in and day out situations and we make them mean something about ourselves and our own self-worth, right? Um uh, this was also probably the beginning of the end with my relationship with organized religion, but that is a conversation for another day. I am very spiritual and I very much believe, um, in God and source, um, and everything I was kind of taught to believe in growing up. I, I still, I still hold those beliefs, but I, 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 I do question organized religion and that is something that, um, you know, I'm still trying, I'm very passionate about, but I'm still trying to articulate and make sense of and trying to explain it. So another topic for another day on that. However, here's the thing, right? So all these negative connotate, like all these negative perceptions and connotations of our menstrual cycle and how we behave when we're on it and what, what it feels like and, and, you know, um, what it's like to have to experience it every 28 days. Um, however, what we fail to see is that you know, our cycle is actually a beautiful thing. It's nature's masterpiece. And this is so far beyond just the baby making abilities. Okay. It is so beyond that. Yes, that is a beautiful miracle that comes out of the system and process. Absolutely. Um, a beautiful, magical miracle. Um, but I want you to, you know, I want you to shift your perspective and start to see that the process and the cycle itself is in itself magical and, and, and a miracle, right? Your body is going through so much at this time. It's, you know, your, and it's all your bodies, your physical body, your emotional body, your mental body, your spiritual body, all of the above, even your spiritual body. And some people think that it's, that's not true, but it is because there's, and, and we'll talk about, um, how the spiritual body kind of plays into this. Um, but it is literally like a, um, mini death and rebirth cycle, right? Where you're letting go of something old to birth something new. So maybe, um, 
you know, you're letting physically, you know, you're letting go of, you know, the, the old uh, materials that you were carrying, right. To support a baby and you're making room to bring in the new, right. Um, your skin's also being recycled. Like a lot of the toxins in your body are being released. Like there's so much going on emotionally. You're purging all of these emotions all of a sudden, right. Um, mentally beliefs, um, thoughts, all of these things are kind of coming up to the surface to be healed spiritually, your energy, like everything is kind of getting like a, a mini, when I say death and rebirth, it's like a mini cleansing and a realignment that kind of keeps you in check every month. And I know, you know, it's not the easiest process to go through, but transformation rarely ever is. Um, but it is a, there is a beautiful, um, there's a beautiful and magical and powerful, um, element to what you're experiencing. It is a very powerful time, a magical time. And the key to harnessing that magic and power is by, you know, tapping into, again, those sacred feminine superpowers that we talked about. And I think it was episode five, surrendering, right? Surrendering to what's happening to you, surrendering to what you're feeling, surrendering to what you're experiencing. Um, really just allow yourself to kind of flow through it. Uh -huh, flow. Um, and really honoring and accepting what's happening to you, right? That radical self-acceptance that we talked about. Um, radically, you know, accepting what you're going through, what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, what you're thinking, right? Really accepting all that as a whole part of the beautiful human that you are. Um, and to see it, right, as something that is beautiful and something that is serving you in a very powerful way. Um, and something that, you know, requires you to be a little bit kinder to yourself, you know, cut yourself a little bit of sl a slot, give yourself some grace, right? Um, it, this is all part of radical self-love and acceptance, right? And is what we talked about, um, I think is number 18 of the 19 sacred feminine superpower superpowers in episode five. Don't quote me on that. Um, and here's how I, you know, um, use that to tap to to really make the most of this magical time so all these rules that i'm about to share with you these do's and don'ts are all based on radical self-love and acceptance um and even a little bit of surrendering right to, to the process so here we go top five we'll start with the don'ts the top five don'ts don't and i repeat don't go anywhere or do anything that you know is going to be super triggering for you. Here's the thing, mood swings are a normal and healthy part of being of, of being at this phase in your cycle. Normal and healthy, there, there's nothing wrong with it. Yes, there's, there's certain, you know, um, nutrients and ways to nourish yourself and your body that will help mitigate, um, you know, some of the emotional fluctuations, but the emotional fluctuations are part of the process and they are serving in a very powerful way, especially when you're going through kind of a healing cycle, right? This is, this is a very powerful time. If you're going through a heal, a cycle of healing and transformation in general in your life, this is going to be probably one of the most powerful times for you when you'll do the most healing, the most, see your shadows like far beyond any other time. Um, it really gives you a glimpse into what's going on, what stories are playing in the back of your mind, beliefs are working behind the scenes that you want to take a look at and start to um, uh, transform, right, and heal. And um, uh, you can't do that if you are constantly trying to pretend that you're okay and you can handle it. And you're going to put yourself in situations where are, that are going to be extra triggering, that you're probably going to have an extra <laughs> emotional response to um you want to really be gentle with yourself and i cannot stress that enough you know all there's going to be plenty of time for you to go back to those triggering situations um and places when this phase of your cycle is done and when you're better equipped to handle them um and so if you can i i would postpone delay defer <laughs> give them to someone else to do. Obviously there's going to be some things that you're going to have to do and just be patient with yourself when you do. Um, and we'll give you some more tips to kind of navigate through that, but you know, it's okay to, to avoid them for the time being. Okay. And really honor yourself and what you're feeling and where you're at. And if you know that something's going to be extremely triggering for you, there's really no need for you to do that to yourself. Um, at this particular time, wait a couple of days. 
Number two, don't. Don't just blurt out what you're thinking and feeling. Here's the thing. I am such an advocate for always speaking your truth and being your authentic self. But when you're, you know, especially like there's, for me, it's a, it's like a 24, 48 hour period where I'm, I'm not myself. I'm somebody else. <laughs> it's like 24 to 48 hours, right? And some women experience this and some women don't. But I know for me that there is a 24 to 48 hour period where I am not myself. <laughs> and the thoughts that I'm thinking are probably not what I'm really feeling. Or maybe not to that degree, right? They're probably a little bit exaggerated. They're probably extra sensitive. And I know this. I know this because any other day of the month, I would not be reacting in such a severe way to what I'm experiencing or thinking or feeling. Yeah, they, there might be some truth to it, of course, but my response to it might be different. Um, I might ex choose to express it differently. I might um, have less of an emotional response to it. I might be able to be a little bit more balanced about it, right? And I know this. So in that 24 to 48 hour period, whatever I'm thinking or feeling, I am not just going to blurt it out. I will pause or at least, okay, I sorry, let me rephrase that. I will try to pause before I say anything and ask myself, is this really true for me? Or am I literally just blowing this out of proportion? Because I'm, I am aware that I am, I can feel that I am very irritable right now. And am I just blowing this out of proportion? Am I going to, if I say this, am I going to regret it tomorrow? Am I going to feel bad for it? Am I going to feel like, okay, you know what? Maybe it wasn't as bad as I made it sound, right? And again, I try to do this as best I can. You know, we don't always hit the mark, but it is something that I do try to do. I try to assess everything that I'm thinking before I verbalize it, right? And then, you know what, if a couple of days have passed and you're still feeling that way or you've sat with it for some time and you're like, no, no, this is genuine, I, I feel like I need to say something here, then by all means, you know, do it. But give yourself that opportunity to kind of catch yourself um, and really think about, is this really what I want to say? Is this really true for me? And would I be feeling the same way if I was in a different biological circumstance, right? You'll save yourself a lot of heartache if you do that, right? And this is this is what it, this is not about filtering you or shaming you for what you're thinking or feeling or making you feel bad if you do blurt out something. This isn't about that at all, not at all. This is about being honest with how you're how you're feeling and that means biologically. Um and maybe just cutting yourself some slack and and giving yourself um, a little room to kind of be in that energy for a while and and just be give yourself the space to kind of you know just examine what you're feeling before um, you put it out there number three don't blame them it's not all their fault if you're in an argument where some with someone or you're having a tiff with someone or someone has said something that has upset you and is triggering you and, and you just feel like this energy of wanting to just push back, you know, it is not just them. Understand that, um, and again, same as what we said before, um, don't just blurt out what you're thinking and feeling. Assess, would I be responding to per this person in the same way if I wasn't currently in the biological phase of my cycle that I'm in? <laughs> Um, would I be as triggered by this tomorrow? Would I have been this triggered by this yesterday? Um, might I have done something five minutes ago that might have triggered this person? I mean, we're all responsible for our own behavior, so you can't really take responsibility for how they react to something that you say, but you can't take responsibility for the energy that you bring to the situation, right? Um, so really think about that, right? And, and again, just take that pause. Take that pause and ask yourself, am I blowing this out of proportion? Have I contributed? How have I contributed to, to, to what's going on right now between me and this other person? Is there something I could have done differently? Did I bring an energy of irritability <laughs> to the situation that maybe this person's picking up on? Um, do I just need to kind of take a time out and come back later, right? Just please be gentle with yourself. And again, if you do screw it up, don't judge. Like it happens, right? All we can do at, uh, at any given time is our best. Um, for gosh sakes, 
don't, this is number four, don't, I repeat, don't, I can't say don't enough, don't call your ex. <laughs> Single ladies out there who are menstrual, please don't call your ex, okay? All the reasons he became your ex are still very relevant. <laughs> and there's, there's really nothing left that needs to be said. It was five years ago, you don't need closure. <laughs> this was, um, this was um, a very interesting experience that I had with um, my ex who, he, well, we didn't, it's funny because we never actually really ended because of a fight or things having gone sour or anything like that. Um, and I'm not, I can't even pinpoint when we ended really because, so he, um, he was only here for a year, um, traveling and then, you know, it was off, it, the plan was always, he was going to go off to the next destination, um, which for him was, was going to be Europe. So, um, and we knew this, we knew this going into the relationship and it was never anything that I ever wanted to hold him back from, you know, um, and we, we remained friends for the first little while, um, when he left, because like I said, we didn't really, I mean, we had our arguments obviously, um, but we didn't break up because of an argument. We didn't break up because of a falling out. We didn't break up because of, you know, our feelings changing for one another. We literally broke up because his, the rest of his life was there and I was, my life was here. Um, so, you know, there was a, there was a, a lot of difficulty there in letting go. And I think for a long time, um, you know, we tried to pretend that we could, I don't know, carry on this long distance something. It wasn't even a relationship because we weren't really seeing each other, but there was something, right? Um, and then eventually, you know, it, it got hard trying to, to stay emotionally attached to somebody who wasn't, you know, physically there anymore. Um, and I think for that reason, we kind of, you know, we just started to kind of drift apart. We started to trigger each other. We started to um, almost kind of rebel against the circumstances that were keeping us connected because I think both of us wanted more, but there was this part, this other part of us that was still attached to the other. And I think we, we realized on a subconscious level that we needed to just make a clean break from that. Right. And it's so funny because every now and then we kind of check in with each other. And, you know, usually there was one time I remember, <laughs> um, it was a couple of years later and I, you know, it was a moment where I was like feeling really sensitive and menstrual. And, you know, of course I'm debating, do I message him? Do I not message him? What do I do? And anyway, I finally message him. We have this emotional conversation. Um, and it just became this emotional, like, like roller coaster of, Hey, how's it going? And then we end up on this like whole emotional high and then this like other side, this emotional low, because we realized nothing's changed. We're still living like, oceans apart. <laughs> um, you know, and it was, it was just, there, there was nothing said in that moment that brought any closure or peace or resolute, like it, it was what it was. And the situation was still exactly the same and how we were coping with the situation was still exactly the same. So, um, was there a healing that happened from that? I don't know. Maybe, maybe on some level there was some healing because I think ever since, so maybe there is some benefit. I don't know. Uh, I'm never going to put that out there because I mean, I think, um, you know, if you're going about it with any expectations, I think that's probably the worst part. Right. But I think for me, you know, having that, that maybe it was in a sense a little bit validating that, okay, there's really no going back. And maybe that was a lesson in itself. Right. Um, but to, to contact them with any hopes of rekindling or any hopes that things have changed or any hope that suddenly they're this whole different person that you always wish they would be, it's not going to happen. Usually, nine out of ten times, unless they've woke up one morning with a desire to change for themselves, right? So um, I would advise not to, you know, again, that emotion, that moodiness, that irritability, that sense of that roller coaster of emotions that are kind of going on for you at that time. It's normal to feel extra sensitive and nostalgic and maybe even a little lonely if you're not in a relationship. It's very normal. Um, but don't use that as an excuse to contact your ex. If you're going to contact your ex, do so because, I guess is what I'm trying to say. If you're going to contact your ex, do so because you feel like it's the aligned thing to do and there's something that you genuinely want to say um, or that you feel needs to be said. And again, better 
wait for a better time when you're more emotionally balanced to have that conversation. Don't do this to yourself now. Um, you're better off waiting. And, you know, again, if in a few days you still feel like, no, I still feel like there's something I need to say, then by all means, contact the guy. <laughs> but wait. Um, or girl, if your ex happens to be a girl. Okay, number five. And this is the cardinal rule. This is the one rule I apply all the time, no matter what. And that is, and I kind of mentioned it throughout, is don't beat, beat yourself up for doing any of the above that we just talked about. You're going to fuck it up. <laughs> it's going to happen. Um, you're going to make a hot mess of things sometimes, and that's okay. All I want you to do, should that happen, is really just, you know, cut yourself some slack. Give yourself some grace. And just say, you know, no matter what's happening, no matter what I've done, I am always doing the best that I possibly can. And there's really nothing that, you know, I can't do my best to make right tomorrow. You know, you can always make things right, especially if it's just like, you know, something that was said in an emotional like upswing of, of something, you know. There's rarely ever a situation where you can't wrong, you can't right a wrong. And you can't do something to make amends for if you really, if you really have effed up, right? And, you know, part of growing up and being an adult and learning to manage your emotions is being able to admit when you effed up and being able to, to, you know, talk to the other person or approach situation from, from that space and, and figuring out, you know, what you can do to own your mistake and make things right, you know, and, and nine out of 10 times, all these things can be fixed, right? Especially if they're, they're meant to be there. So I say that and I'll leave it at that. Now, that's the five don'ts. We'll get into the five do's. Do give yourself permission to say no. Say no to all the things that people are asking you for. Say no to all the things that, you know, you, you always feel like you're expected to be at or participate in or things that you're meant to tackle on your to-do list. Say no. Maybe not to everything, but feel free to say no to some things. Whittle it down. Give yourself some free time. Give yourself some space. Give yourself some room to breathe and just kind of be in the energy of of feeling your feels and going through this process and, and giving yourself this period of grace, right? Like really create... Um, yeah, like that, it's like a, like a circle of space for you, like a safe circle, right? A safe circle. <laughs> Create that safe circle for you to be in where you can kind of spend time and just be in the energy of feeling irritable and, and feeling the, the moodiness and, and the uncomfortableness and the, 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 the crampiness and, you know, all of it. Just, just give yourself space to do that and stop trying to take on so much and stop trying to pretend like, you know, it's just another day and you can get through your to-do list just fine. No, cut yourself some slack. Take some things off the list for, for a day or two. You know, say no to some invitations if you can. Um, say no to the extra favors that you would probably normally say yes to. Or say, I can't do it today. Maybe I can do it um, another day, right? Really be mindful about that because, again, this is your time. Your body's going through a lot and you need to honor it and give it the space to do so. And, and give it the time that it needs to rest and heal. Which brings me to my number two, do pamper and nourish your body and soul, right? So once you've made the time and said no to all these things and created this safe little circle for you to be in, nourish yourself. Take some naps, sleep in, take a nice, beautiful, long salt bath, light an aromatherapy candle, like do things for yourself. Give, give yourself really good foods, nice warm herbal teas. Um, drink lots of water to hydrate yourself and help your body with that detox process, right? Like do put on some music, some soothing music to make you feel better. Or maybe just some music to make it like something to make you have a good cry and get those emotions out, right? Really give yourself, you know, once you've created the space, use the space and fill it up with things that are going to nourish you and make you feel better and soothed, right? This is all about self-soothing. Because oftentimes I think we get into the pattern of trying to pretend that we're okay and we're not, and then we're kind of hoping someone else is going to do the soothing for us. It doesn't always work that way. Trust me, learn to self-soothe. Your relationships will appreciate. It's not to say that you can never get you you can never get that support through your relationships. Absolutely not. That's not what I'm suggesting. But there is something very empowering and 
healing for your relationships when you can learn to not depend on them for it and you can kind of soothe yourself through these times. Um, do journal out what you're thinking or feeling, you know, whether it's through just, you know, straight journaling, whether it's, um, just expressing how you feel, writing letters and never actually sending them. If you have something that you want to say to somebody, writing poems, lyrics of songs, even whatever it is that floats your boat, get those feelings out. And instead of taking them out on someone or something, get them out on paper right? Be really bold and transparent and authentic and really say what it is you're really feeling. And actually a really good exercise in learning how to manage your cycle is to, you know, on the day that you're feeling the funkiest, actually sit down and actually write everything that you're thinking and feeling, everything that you're, you know, everyone that you're mad at and why you're mad at them and what they did to make you angry and how that's making you feel and what that means about who you are in your life right now. And then in three days later, I want you to read it and I want you to see, okay, so what still is, what still resonates for me and what still holds true and where am I like, wow, I really can't trust what I'm thinking and feeling when I'm on my period, can I? (laughs) So it's a really powerful lesson when you do that because you start to pick out, okay, so what are the themes here that I need to start working on and changing and what is really true that I need to, um, you know, carve out some time to address versus what am I totally blowing out of proportion, right? And maybe is a bit of an issue, but certainly not as much as I thought it was two days ago, or maybe it's not an issue at all, because honestly, I know exactly why that person said what they did. And I know exactly where they were coming from. And it's all good. Right? It really helps to put things in perspective. And you'll, you'll start to be able to better handle navigating the mood swings. And and this is never to say, you know, it's never about control. I'm using quotes again. I got to stop using quotes on a podcast. Quote, unquote, control the mood swings. Go with the mood swings. Go with the flow of the mood swings. But learn to, to work with them and stop trying to, you know, on one extreme, we're either denying them completely and pretending that they're not happening and we're okay, which is totally untrue. Or we're taking those mood swings and we're like just projecting them and reacting to the world based on what those feelings are telling us is, is happening, right? We don't want either. We want to stay in the middle. We want to honor the feelings, feel the feelings, go through the emotions, go through the experience, really cherish it. Um, and then just take a pause and come back and see what's really real and what is maybe was exaggerated as a result of what was going on biologically at the time. Um, Number four, do, and this is something I swear by, do tell everyone that you love that you're feeling menstrual, you know, especially on that, when I'm on that 24 to 48 hour spell, when I'm just like my, like I'm just completely funky (laughs) and I know it and I can feel the irritability, like just oozing through me. Um, I will tell them, listen, (laughs) I'm not at my best today. I'm extremely menstrual. Um, I may say something that you might take the wrong way. (laughs) I may say something that sounds harsh. It has nothing to do with you. I'm just feeling really funky today. Um, so please know that. And if, if I say or do anything today, just please don't think it has anything to do with you. I'm just feeling extremely miserable right now. And you know what? They usually really appreciate that. And they're usually a lot kinder to me (laughs) when I do that. Um, Because I'm not attacking them. I'm not making them feel like this is somehow their fault. I'm not making them feel like there's something that they need to do about it. Other than to just say, hey, can you cut me a little slack today? Because I'm not feeling my best. Right? And, And that's okay. They'll appreciate you not taking it out on them. And they'll be like, oh, oh, okay, you know, do do you want to, do you want to do anything? Do you want to watch movies? Do you want me to make you some tea? Like, you know, totally different spin on things. And then you end up feeling supported, which one woman doesn't want to feel supported when she's menstruating, right? Even if it's, even if it's not, even if they're not doing you any favors, you still feel energetically supported because the person is understanding that, you know, this isn't coming you know, what's coming from you is not really directed at them in any way. It's just something that you're feeling and going through. And they're cutting you the slack to to experience that. 
Last but not least, that last, what did I just say? Last but not least, number five of the do's, do have some chocolate. It's so good for you. And maybe not the regular chocolate. I would obviously stick to the dark chocolate. The thing is, is that dark chocolate is so loaded with nutrients and antioxidants. It's actually really nourishing for your body to have a little bit when, um, you know, you're menstruating and it actually helps your body with the detox process, which is, which is something that your body naturally does on its own. Um, but just having those antioxidants added into your system, all of those nutrients added into your systems and minerals. Um, and it does actually, there is, there is scientific, um, stats to back up that it actually does help your mood. Um, and I mean, you can reference a lot of the women's health journals online that will, that will, um, which is where I got this information. I think I got it from womenshealth.com actually. Um, and you know, it, and it is, it is very comforting and uplifting. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm usually like really craving, um, I go through this cycle where I crave, um, you know, I go from the salt to sugar train, right? I'm in that cycle of like, okay, now I need something salty. Okay. Now I need something sugary. And and, and, and sweet. Okay, now I need something salty to, to balance out the, the sugar I just had, right? And I keep, I keep oscillating between the two back and forth. I find that when I have that craving for something sweet, which is usually what comes first before the salt, I find that if I have that taste of dark chocolate, not only does it make me feel better, but then I don't have to I don't have that salt craving because I haven't over induced over over overcompensated with the sugar quantities that I'm taking in. So because that's usually what happens, right? We crave something sweet. So we have something sweet and sugary. Um, when really what our body is looking for is like, you know, water or fruit or something along those lines. Um, but instead of um, you know, doing that, we, you know, we have a box of Twinkies <laughs> or um we eat a a a thing of turtles, chocolates, right? Or whatever it is, or ice cream, right? And we've overloaded our body with all this sugar, and now the body's craving salt to balance it out. Um, you know, that's and then we just caught in that cycle of back and forth, sweet, salt, sweet, salt, sweet, salt. I find that if I start with the dark chocolate. I don't then, it, it kind of ends there, right? Because I have the dark chocolate, I feel better, I feel a little bit soothed, I feel like I've eaten something sweet, but I haven't actually put all that sugar into my body, so I'm not now bouncing back into the salt craving, right? So it's just something that I've learned. It helps It helps me um, deal with the cravings. It helps my mood, obviously, because I love chocolate. Um, I In the summer, I especially love pairing dark chocolate with strawberries. I, it's a awesome combination. Um, and you know, and I know I'm, I'm giving something that is nutrient rich to my body too. Like I'm not, I'm not, I, I am not, I've really broken up with the whole, um, diet culture that we live in. (laughs) I really have, uh, or at least I'm in the process of breaking up with it. Um, but there are like, I mean, I, I do think that we can all benefit from eating less sugar, less salt in our diet. I really do. Um, there, there, I just don't think it serves, especially like, um, sugars that are not naturally occurring in foods. Like I think fruits are great for you. I don't believe in any diet that restricts fruit, um, or denies you fruit. I mean, obviously in moderation, right. But, um, I, I think natural sugars are great. Um, even things like honey, um, maple syrups, um, even brown sugar is fine in moderation. But when we start to get into like the white, um, like candy sugar, bad, <laughs> so bad for you. Um, I mean, on occasion, fine, but I, I do try and avoid it on a regular basis. So, and I find that when I stick to the dark chocolate, when I'm, when I'm on my cycle, it makes it easier to manage the cravings because I don't go from that extreme swing from one to the other, from salty to sweet. And I know I'm doing something good for my body. So there's no guilt. Um, okay. So there you have it. Those are my 10 do's and don'ts um, for how to have a feel better menstrual cycle period. Um, and as always, you know, with the journaling prompts, if you do want to do start starts from journaling, you can always download the daily radical shift daily practice, five steps, five minutes. Uh, I do this every day regardless of menstruating or not, because I think it's so important to do, to check in every day with how we're feeling and set our intentions for 
what it is that we want to create that day. And that's really what this practice is all about. So you can grab that at my website at www.femcoach.com. You'll see the link to it on the main page there. Um, other than that, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, depending on where you're seeing this. If you're seeing it in the blog, um, you can post a comment there. Otherwise, you can um, email me at maria at femcoach.com. Let me know, um, did this resonate for you? Can you relate to my experience? Which are you going to take away and maybe start implementing? And do you have your own little ritual or tip or technique that you can share that we can then share with the community? Let me know. Um, I always love to hear from you guys. I love the feedback. I love hearing when things resonate. And I love hearing your ideas because I think um, we all have beautiful ideas that we can uh, share with each other to, you know, to help us, I don't know, be, I don't want to say be the best version of ourselves because I think that expression is overused, but really, but really harness that feminine superpower that we always talk about. I think we always have tips, we all have tips and techniques for how we do that, even though we sometimes don't realize that we do. Um, and I think that the more we share these things, with each other, the better off and more powerful we'll all be. And on that note, um, thank you so much for tuning in. It was a pleasure to have you here. I wish you an amazing week and until next time, massive love. You've been listening to the FemCast podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please follow and share. And don't forget to check out my website at www.thefemcoach.com for more resources and tools to help you harness your sacred feminine superpowers to create your best, best life. Until next time, massive love.